this is this is the the post lunch everybody's sleepy and they don't get any more coffee and they need to use the restroom but we're having one more session how about that we need to bring the energy for this one this better be good are you ready you got the two of us we're gonna bring some energy to this session ready to go this is your third session in let's a row. go come on did you even get lunch <laughs> I tell you, I feel like I'm bowling right now. Three strikes. Let's go. Oh, yeah, three strikes. You got a turkey. There we go. Bowling. <laughs> bowling. You're feeling it. Feel yeah. It. Praise the Lord. What are we talking about? We're talking about when the flames die down. Ooh, write that down. That's when the name the of this When the flames die session. down. When like, the flames die down. We're talking about the flames of hell. hell. Yeah. The flames, the fires die down. Ooh. Are we talking about like the fire of the Holy Spirit burning in our hearts? Yeah. The passion. The desire. Have anybody ever been in a place where you've been serving and showing up, but you've been exhausted and dehydrated? You've been like, ugh, I'm just running on fumes. I don't feel the, 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 the juice that I did before. But it's like, God, I know I'm supposed to serve, so here I go. I take my time doing everything. It's no zeal. It's no excitement. I get to go to the house of the Lord. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm here. <laughs> ah. <laughs> you wake up in the morning on Sunday morning. Yeah. The alarm clock goes off. Beep, beep, <laughs> beep, beep. Hey, quiet that down. <laughs> Five more minutes. In, can I call in sick today? Yeah. I you don't know? feel like leading worship they, today. They have somebody else that can step in for me. Ooh. <laughs> Anybody? Uh, is this been any? Tell the truth. It's quiet. Hey, it's quiet. all right. We have honest worship leaders in the house yeah, today. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yes. What about, um, you know, it takes a lot, the things we've talked about. Yeah. It takes a lot to keep yourself constantly filled with the, the passion and constantly on the end of your game. You're, yeah. Man, sometimes you, you get down in the dumps. Yeah. It's not just one day you're tired. No. Like, it's a long stretch. Yeah. Um, has that ever happened to any of our worship leaders in the house where you're just tired? Where am I at in my spirituality? Burnt out. Ooh. Oh, man, we're going to talk about those things today. Yes. What are some things that you can do, some things that maybe we've learned? Yeah. Uh, um, some things that God's revealed to us. Yeah. I know you could probably ask some other people in, the, in the, our crowd here today. Yeah. Some of the things that they've done. Uh, to really keep the fire going, too. But yeah. I know you've got a couple. Do you want to start with sharing? Yeah, I just want to share a story, right? Like, um, there was a time I was working, and I was, like, doing ministry, and uh, I was showing up. My responsibility was the worship leader. And uh, my instant thought was, like, who, fe who fuels the worship leader when they're fueling the team? Wow. Right? Like, they're constantly gassing up everybody's tank but who fills their tank and so you like the pastor he's leading the church right the executive team leading the operations right and here I am and I felt in a place of like a little bit alone like I want to show up to rehearsal because I don't want to bring this exhaustion to rehearsal right so I'm just showing up with the best smile I can give I'm showing up with the best applications I can give, the best rehearsal I can give. But inside, I was exhausted. I often went home on my ride home from rehearsal crying like, God, this is crazy. I feel like this. Like, this cannot be what serving looks like. This cannot, because if this is it, I'm, I'm going to, you know, like, come on, Lord, come on back so I can get on out of this, right? Like, <laughs> Check the eastern skies Check. for Jerusalem. Has the Lord returned yet? Please. <sighs> and what God showed me is, he said, you know, you have to um, get near the stream. There's a story in Isaiah that talks about. Um, that you want to be like a tree that's planted by the river so that when the sun comes and the scorching of day the leaves will never turn yeah. because it's planted 
by the water. What that showed me is that where your foundation is rooted, you have the ability to be an environment that's high demand, that's high heat, but still with resist all of that and never change because you are grounded near the streams of water. And God was telling me, hey, you have to get plugged into me. I was running, running, and running, and running, and I didn't spend my devotion like I, I should have. I spent enough, but enough wasn't going to do it. The Bible app, five minutes in the morning, it ain't going to do it. <laughs> you know? You had to get more, and so some practical things that the Lord showed me, he said, one, you have to spend time with me, with God. Hebrew 12, 29 tells us that, for our God is consuming fire. How are you going to be caught on fire if you're not with the consuming fire? Oh, that's good. Right? Yeah. The number one reason that you may be going cold is because you aren't spending time with the consuming fire. The second thing he told me. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Can I pause you there? Yeah. I'm going to interview. Come on. I think everybody wants to interview you today. So I'm going <laughs> to just think. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I got that for you. Uh, um, so what are some of the things, that, the indicators that tell you you're getting good quality time? I think some of us, you know, I've got my checklist. And if I check off five minutes in the Bible app in the morning, check. I've spent my time with God. So you're talking about spending time in that consuming fire of God. How do I know if I'm spending enough time in the presence of God? How can you tell that, okay, I can move on with my day now? Cause, or how can I tell, man, I need to adjust my schedule so that I'm getting enough time. Are there some indicators that you have in your life that I'm getting enough time to stay on top of the curve? Yeah, for me, I feel like a sense of peace, mm, right? That's, that's one of the things that I know. Like when I'm spending time with God, if I feel an urge to like, oh, I need to go do this, oh, I need to go do that, nine times out of ten, those are distractions, that's trying to pull me, right, yeah. right? But if I feel peace, it's like God's confirmation that I'm sending you now, right? And uh, that's one of the biggest things for me. And what that looks like for me is just like, hey, like, normally when I'm spending time with God, I cry. I'm a cry baby. Like, I would cry right. baby. Well, well, that's just me, right? And, uh, you know, when I feel that peace, those tears start to dry up and I start feeling like back, right? Because I'm so consumed with the Lord that I start feeling myself come back, right, to yeah. a place. Oh, that's good. You mean uh, it would benefit, like, our worship leaders in the room, it would benefit them to, to spend, it might be five minutes for some, it might be a little longer for others, yeah. but yeah. spending that much time in the presence of, the, of yeah. God daily that you really start to feel him well up inside of you exactly. to the point of even, not all of us are emotional, sure. I, I cry. I was crying last night at Jason Upton talking about his daughter and the dead cat. Yeah. You know, I'm like, man, I went through that with my daughters, with the cat. And yeah. Broke my daughter's hearts so that the cat was dead. Yeah. Daddy, can you help? <laughs> uh, you know, so I'm, I cry sure. too. I, I feel the presence of God. I, I cry too. But maybe not everybody's that way, but, but we should be spending that much time. Yes. Daily. Yes. In the presence of God, not just studying the scripture to learn information theology, doctrine, not just, uh, you know, something to check off a list, but yeah. really sensing his presence. Yeah, and, and you know, the biggest thing, like, when we think of, like, worship, right, worship is a call and a what? Response. Ooh, yeah. And oftentimes, we get into these moments where we call to God, but we don't wait for the response of God, right? And so, baking time, like, when you want to determine how much time I need, you need time to wait for the response of God. If you don't know, if you know you don't have a lot of time, don't get in that prayer time and start throwing all your needs out there, right? Wait to hear back from the Lord, right? The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and everything that you need will be added unto you. If you're going to advance God's kingdom here in the earth, you need his instructions. That's by seeking him. Not telling him, God, this is the order I want things to go in the day and give me peace. Amen. You know, no, it's God, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to wait and I'm not going to move. And if I sit here, I know that you align everything else up. Even if I'm running late to another thing, you align that up too. 
because I'm not moving until I get a word from you, until you're with me. That's good. That's good. What a spiritual discipline that is. Yes. I mean, that's more than just I'm, I have a discipline of having a, a quiet time. Yeah. Like, that's a spiritual discipline. And think about the, the amount of time that you have to put into perfecting your craft as a musician, yeah. singer. Mm -hmm. That's something that, that the higher standard we talked of earlier, maybe that's required of worship leaders, that that's a craft that you yeah. have to master, Yeah, is that ability to spend time sensing the presence of the Lord. Yeah. If you do that in your prayer closet, mm -hmm. you'll be able to do it on the platform. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. It's very... Very, very important to spend that time. When I was um, growing as a worship leader, and this is for those that may just be stepping into it, right? And you're like, man, I'm not to the place where I can do two hours. You know, I start zoning out, right? I got ADHD. I start thinking and twiddling with all kinds of things, right? And uh, one of the things I started with was a 33 challenge. Okay. I spent 10 minutes of prayer, 10 minutes of worship, and 10 minutes of devotion. And then I took it up, and I started going 40 minutes, 50 minutes, right? And to a point where I'm like, hey, nothing else matters right. but being in this place with God, Yeah. right? Nothing else matters. Like, all of that can fade away because I have everything that I already need. That's great. Right? The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd, right? I shall not want, yeah. right? He's everything that I need. He supplies all my needs through his riches and glory. Right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we get busy in trying to make things happen for ourselves, take control in our own hands. And God's like, look, I have this already. I have it right here in my hand. If you just sit here, I'll hand it to you. But you're like, no, you're like the teenager that wants to go out and just like, hey, I'm going to go buy my own car. And, and your father has a car sitting in the driveway for you. Oh. Wow. Nice, man. I'll let you go to your second point. <laughs> I could keep going yeah. all day. That, that's great. What a great, just to wrap that up, uh, that point of, of yeah. making that like an athlete. I'm thinking about like an athlete. Even. Yes. You have to train. Yeah. The longer you train, the easier it gets mm -hmm. to, to have endurance and strength. Yeah. But um, if you don't train, you can't go, uh, you can't run a marathon. Yeah. Ooh, and we're on. This is not a sprint we're on, friend. No. This is a marathon we're on. That fire's going out. Maybe yeah. you're just like sprinting yeah. without training. Yeah. You're trying to run a marathon without training. If the fire goes out, that could be that could be it. Yes. Man, I just think when I'm, you know, you can obviously tell I'm in the gym a lot. Yeah. Come on. Gym. Yeah. It's that way. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go into the gym and just lift the heaviest weights. It takes, I got to work my way up to it and build the endurance and the strength to do those things. And uh, that's the way it is I've found for the long haul in my spirituality. It's like if you miss a quiet time or two, you don't lose all your strength. The fire doesn't die out overnight. It just kind of over time finds its way down and down. And before you know it, you can't lift the same weight. So you don't have the same fire. So, um, man, just that little bit every day, building up your endurance and then keeping it there, just constantly nurturing it a little bit each day. Woo! Hey. Yes. Good yes. stuff. That leads right into the next, the next point is spend time in the Word. Yep. There it is. You're spending time with God and you're spending time in the Word. Jeremiah 23, 29 says, is not my word like fire? Isn't it funny how you can start speaking the word? You can start saying, greater is he that's in me. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, right? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. A thousand fall at the left hand, 10,000 fall at the right hand, but there I am in the midst. You start quoting these things and you start feeling fire. I'm ready to go. Who speaks the word over their life? That should be everybody. Who speaks the word over their life? When you start getting in God's word, not just reading it, but retaining it, yeah. hiding it, letting the word be written on the tablet of your heart, right? Because, you know, if you just hear the word, there's a story in the Bible that talks about, you know, the enemy will come and he'll steal it right out of your heart. Ooh. Take that thing right away. You, you leave, please don't leave this conference and everything that we say just goes to the fall over to the side. Yeah. Like, write it down. Retain it. Put it in your heart. I got to have this word because his word is like fire. Yeah. Yeah. In our, our digital society, I think this is hard. Yeah. Um, Jason Upton said it. Yeah. Last night, remember, he said our machines 
yeah. that make us run faster than the speed of reality. Woo. <laughs> that was heavy, wasn't it? Yeah. I wrote that down. Me, me and you both wrote it down. Yeah, yeah sure did. You wrote that down. <laughs> the, the digital realm we live in, it's, it seems like, I don't know about you, but it seems like I'm just always on to the next thing. Yeah, oh. On to the next thing. Anyone, on to the next thing. There, there's always something waiting for your time. As soon as you get done, it's on to the next thing. Um, it, it actually is it, It's a craft you have to develop yeah. to be able to post-process after a conference like this. What are you going to do with the notes? Ooh. You know? Yeah. What Are you, are you going to go back through what you learned, what God spoke to you? Hopefully you're writing down not just what the speakers say, but what God speaks to you in the yeah. moment. Yeah. Those things, you're, you're writing those down. Yeah. Um, in your journal, in your Bible, in your notes, yeah. um, somehow, and then and then going back and chewing on those things. I love the scriptures have that that beautiful imagery of a cow chewing on its cud, like ruminating on the the word. Yeah, when he talks yeah. about how we should ruminate on the yes, word. Yes, yes. You guys know, right? The cows that chew the cud, swallow it, spit it back up, chew on it some more, swallow it, spit it back up, chew because <laughs> they have four stomachs apparently. Yeah. So that just goes around different. Oh, I, sometimes. <laughs> I feel like I have four stomachs sometimes. Yeah. I'm always hungry. <laughs> but uh, but, right, but that, that a, approach to the word and the things that we're learning about God and yeah. constantly revisiting them. I hope everyone here is an, is an expert journaler. Someone who has a, a great, we talked about systems earlier. Yeah. I think a great system for journaling the things that God speaks to you so you can go back and review them. I have a, a journal that, uh, uh, of words that God's given me. Yeah. Does anyone do that? Wave at me if you, some of you do that. Yeah, do you do that? Maybe write down like God yeah. gave me a word. Yeah. So I have I have them all in my phone now, sure. digital solution. Yeah. But uh, I go through them. I call them my daily confession. Wow. So I go through and it says uh, one of the words, just one of them, and it was about my kids. Anybody ever worry about your kids? Anybody got kids? Worry about your kids sometimes. Yeah. So God, He gave me a word one time. He says, "Your your daughters are my daughters. You don't have to worry about them." Wow. I've got everything covered. I said, <laughs> wrote that down in my <laughs> journal because I need to go back and ruminate on that. Yeah. When I start worrying about my teenage girls and my yeah. young adult, they're young adults now. Come on. At times when there's worry, I've got to go back to the promises of God that has been spoken over my life. You know. Um, so anyway, that was just one of those things. You know, it's it's the thoughts, it's the the memory. That's why your that's why your memory is important because. When I think of the goodness of God and all that he's done for me, right? Like, all, all it takes is a memory, right, to then say, you know, if God has done it in one season, I know he's victorious enough to do it in this season. If God has healed like that in one season, I know that God is faithful to deliver in this season. Sometimes you just got to think about what he's already done and it gives you faith and fuel to believe what he's already doing in this season it's the thought of god i love i love what um jason said yesterday too he says if you want anything real you have to go at the rate of it's becoming at it's becoming you got to go at the rate do you understand that god sets the rate of our life yeah. not you God predestined your life. God wrote your end before your beginning, meaning that he said, hey, at this time, at this appointed time, it will come to pass. And what Pastor John was saying, culture will make you say, like, you can make things happen for yourself. Right. Then you get so tired. And some of us, and I'm, I'm a testament of this, getting exhausted by trying to make things happen that I felt was God's timing. Gosh. Woo! <laughs> I'm like, oh, this must be God, so let me go and make all of these happen. And I'm doing all of these things, talking about, yep, I'm just serving the Lord, making all of these things happen. And I'm burning out. And God's like, yep, but it's at my time when it will be released. You could do all of that, but it at my time when it will be released. So good, man. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys still with us? You ready for coffee? Yeah. <laughs> They're not doing too bad then. All They're right. There's only bad. a couple of yeah. They're not doing bad. They're not doing bad. What else you got over yeah, there? Yeah, I'm going to share this other one. It's, 
When you're trying to get God's timing of things and continue to be refilled or rejuvenated in the presence of God, it's very important to spend time in your prayer closet. Yeah. James yeah. 5 and 16 said, the servant prayers of the righteous man availeth much. Mm. Or 2 Chronicles 7, 1 says, now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offerings and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. If you need a fresh reminder or a fresh fire of the Lord, it's a good place to get into your prayer closet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome good. sauce. That's like, again, I'm a systems guy. Yeah. Does everybody know where they're, could you tell me right now where your prayer closet is? Think about it. Do you have your, like your spot? This is one of those, I, I remember the first time I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 50. How about that? I'm 50 years old, right? <laughs> hey, all right. 50 years old. Looking Remember good, that? man. Young man. I'll never forget the first time I, when I first started pastoring in my 20s, I saw a picture of like an older a pastor. I guess he was probably in his 60s at the time um, in his, uh, in his, his um, what we would call it an office. Uh, but he had like a, a prayer bench. He had a prayer bench, a kneeling bench, you know, with the, uh, I don't know if you've seen him, right? The kneeling bench, so the place where you kneel and it has like yeah. at the right height, a place that he had set his Bible. And uh, I remember sitting in his office looking over and that thing was worn out where his knees had been for like 40 years of ministry. Just the, the indentations in it. And he said, yeah, I, every few years I have to get new cushions on there because my knees wear out. The, oh. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's something that has been kind of lost. Um, different pastor told me this. He said the, um, the worst thing that ever happened in the, and I know I'm talking about pastors, but you're worship leaders, you're shepherds, you're, you're leading people in the presence of God. One of the worst things that ever happened was when the pastor's study became the pastor's office. I didn't, I didn't know what that meant until I realized that this pastor had a separate space that he goes to where he studies the scriptures, his library, where all he does is pray and study in a separate place where he, he runs the operational aspects of his organization. He doesn't mix the two. He spends way more time, he told me, in the prayer room than in the office. Come on, come on, come on. You know, I had to I take a it. little slow walk after come that on, one. Come on, come on, I feel it. I walked out of there with my head hung low like, oh, man. <laughs> I thought I was trying to build a mega church. That was, ooh, this is what the Lord likes. Then you meet somebody that gets all of their strength and all of their fire from being in the presence of God, studying the scriptures in a, a consistent space that they go to on a regular basis yeah. to seek the Lord. Mm. Not just on their phone. He doesn't take his phone in his Study. He don't need it. Wow. How about that? Wow. It's his paper Bible by his prayer stand. Like, yeah. Oh, his computer? Nope. Yeah. Mm. That's in the office. Woo! Oh, my gosh. So one of the great things to keep that fire going might just be find your prayer closet. What's that space that's it's sacred? Yeah. It's a place that is a quiet place. And I know it's tough. I've raised children, right? My children are grown. They were little. It was so hard to find any space that I could call my own yeah. when they were little. It was yeah. just impossible. Can I, can I even get five minutes in the bathroom without my kids bothering me? I can't get any time, any space to myself. Um, I know how it is when you have children. You have to find a way, though. Yeah. As a worship leader, yeah. um, the fire will die down, yeah. won't it? Yeah, and you got to clear the distractions out. I love how you said it. they didn't bring phones, laptops, nothing. Maybe there are some spaces that have been sacred, but you have been polluting it with your distractions. Yeah, could be. Could that could be. be a thing, too. It could be. Take that away. The last thing I want to share with you uh, from what I had is mm -hmm. spend time with God's people. Oof. Yes. That's important. Acts 2 and 3 says, then they appeared to them divided tongues as a fire and one sat upon each other. One thing I noticed about that group of the church members in Acts 1 and 2 is that every one of them were on fire. You know why? Because they were all there. Yeah. There's something that happens when we gather together. 
there is a fire that is released when we are together. Like we talked about, when we get in agreement, right, there is a fire of the Holy Spirit that ignites. Your soul is refreshed. That's why the Bible says, don't forsake the assembly, the gathering of the assembly. You need to be in church. You need to be in a setting like this. I can't wait to get into the presence of God with my brothers and sisters. I got to come to church. Yes. <laughs> wait, you mean I can't just like tune in on the phone? Yeah, I'm, I'm not on platform this week, so <laughs> YouTube church for me. Yeah. I'm going to watch Stephen Furtick. I like Pastor Sebastian, yeah. but <laughs> T.D. Jakes is on right now. Sorry. The Lord is blessing you. <laughs> the Lord. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> get ready for the blessing. Sorry. <laughs> Come on, it's a post-lunch session. We're having some fun. We're having some fun. Yeah. How, hey, how do you keep the fire going? You have some fun. You have some fun. I like to have some fun. Have some Go fun. ahead. Didn't mean to interrupt. We're having fun. You, got? <laughs> I mean, you said Acts 2. Acts 2. Acts 2. I love, I love the. there's another account in Acts 4. Yeah. This has always been one of my favorites. Oh, man, I love it. I'm, uh, one on. time I made the mistake of, I, I was back uh, before Instagram, I was tweeting a lot on Twitter. <laughs> and I tweeted one time, I was like, man, I love Acts 4. That's such a powerful chapter. I, I think, I, I wish I could memorize the whole thing. And one of my accountability partners reached out to me and says, deal. Uh, We're going to memorize the whole chapter. Okay. And it took about the next year. We memorized a verse a week and memorize the whole chapter until we could repeat the whole chapter from memory. Wow. I can't do it right now yeah. <laughs> with this microphone on the spot. It's been a few years. But uh, that was, want to talk about hiding the word in your heart? Yeah. Memorize an entire chapter of the Bible. Wow. Whew. But uh, Acts 4, I love it that at the end it says this, and about the, just that community yeah. keeping you on fire. So, you know, these miracles, you know, it's a miraculous chapter. It's incredible. Uh, but then it says, uh, in response to what God did, it says, now the full member of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. There's that unity piece, you know? And with great power, everybody say power. Power. Like T.D. Jake say power. Power. Power with a big low voice. That's a Tim Timberlake right there. Power. <laughs> so with, uh, with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Wow. There was not a needy person among them. For as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and bought, brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to each as any had need. And thus Joseph who is also called by the apostles Barnabas, a Levite, a native, native of Cyprus, who sold a field that belonged to him and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. There's like supernatural unity going on in the church Come in on. this section, this yeah. whole section, uh, the beginning of Acts. It makes me so happy. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> so that community, ever, that unity has just been a theme here today. Have you sensed yeah. it? Man, um, th uh, think about the sacrifice we see in the early church there. Throughout all of that, um, I think to keep the fire going for me, one of the things we'll have to do is we'll have to sacrifice some things. Wow. You know? Think wow. about the attitude they all had of like, I'll give up whatever it takes for the good yeah. of the community. Yeah. To keep the fires burning at church. Yeah. Hey, there's people with needs. I'm going to give to those people. Mm. Oh, man. Am I getting into a financial message? Is this a uh -huh. money message now? Come on. Man, there's a spirit of generosity, I believe. Uh, the, the, in, to keep the fire burning. And I know yeah. this is kind of off script, but um, you know that scripture that says, he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. Yes. There's a spirit of generosity that we find in the early church mm. that, um, man, I, I don't think they were worried about the fire going out. <laughs> they were just adding fuel to the fire. Yeah. They brought everything that they had, time, mm. money, property. Like, Jesus is the resurrected king. Yeah. He has risen from the dead. Yeah. The power of God is upon us. We're preaching the gospel and people are getting saved. Yeah. Man, everybody was all in. And so um, I think there's a level of, of generosity with your time, like stewardship, like that sacrificial spirit. Yeah. When that's on us, I found, when that's been on me, it might just be me. But when that's been on me, I find my fire just keeps burning. Yes. When I try to protect all my time and I protect all, you know, oh, I don't have time or energy for that or money or anything else. I find, like, when I start to get stingy, my fire starts going out. Yeah. Isn't that funny? 
That dovetails into what you were saying, just about that community. When, when the community of God, when the people of God, um, I'm not saying that you can't have you know, time to yourself and your own yeah, things, yeah. but like when the community of God is one of your highest priorities, it keeps fire burning. Yes. I don't know. I yes. see it in the scripture, so I thought I'd bring it up. Yeah, that's so, that's so important. And I, I think that you guys can relate to that too. Have you ever done something for someone and it just brought you so much joy, Mm-mm. so much excitement? You're like, man, I want to do that again. Woo. Lord, is there anybody's prayer like, Lord, let, allow me to be blessed so I can be a blessing to anybody else? Yeah. Right? That's the fire. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Right? When the Holy Spirit, we walk in the Spirit of God, he produces these things in our life. Yeah. And these are the fruits of the Spirit. Right? He produces these things in our life. And that's the fire of God that's in us. Yeah. Man. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I've, got, I've got one last thing. Yeah, I'm good. Go ahead. There? Yeah. Just one last point. That, I, that, that last one, the generosity piece, is just something that came to me as you were sharing there. Yeah. Acts too, but um, that generosity piece, I'm glad the Lord brought that up. I didn't have it in my notes. <laughs> I'm glad the Lord brought it up. Um, I, wanna, I, I wanted to share this and make sure I shared it with you because the Lord brought it to me as I was praying about this time. It's funny. I woke up thinking with this word on my heart about um, like the thrones. Of, you know, like throne rooms. And it was funny, what is the first song we sing when we came in? It's about throne rooms. We, and I think it was one of the first words when, when Pastor Sebastian stepped up and started talking about like the throne room of God. I was thinking when, in terms of worship, I think about like uh, God is enthroned on the praises of his people, right? Wow. He's, he's enthroned on, uh, you know, it says in the scripture in, in, he's enthroned on the, in, in Israel and in his people. That's, that's us when he's enthroned. When we praise God and we, we lift him up, it creates an, an atmosphere, like a special atmosphere. There's something about that. And uh, in the, the New Testament, uh, this is Colossians uh, chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. Um, it says, it's talking about Jesus here. It says that he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones, there's that word, or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him, right? So right now you're thinking, what's this got to do with keeping the fire hot? Well, I'm going to get there. Come on, we'll take us around a circle, like Jason Upton said. Yeah, here it is. So a couple of quick things that I I took notes on in there as, as the Lord was speaking to me. The first thing I saw in the scripture is that Jesus is sovereign. Jesus, he is the authority over all creation. He's the firstborn over all creation, right? And he created all things. I see this. He created all things for his purposes, right? Every one of us, everything, everything. I always think that word everything's funny. What's what's beyond everything? Nothing. (laughs) Everything includes everything. Everything created by Jesus, for Jesus, through Jesus. Get your mind around that. Jesus created that chair you're sitting on. I know men made it, but like he created the things that it's made out of. Like he spoke in, you know, however many years later or whatever, the metal and the wood and the, isn't it funny? Like the atoms, they were all like created by God and he knew they'd be formed into a chair. I don't know. It's just strange to think like there's nothing that exists that he didn't imagine before. It's just the infinite, uh, the infinite nature of God. Yeah. It, it helps us understand that, that he's in control, right? And um, I, I saw in this scripture that he created thrones. And um, uh, when, uh, what Paul's talking about here is talking about seats of power, like an elevated seat, like seats of authority, seats of power. You think of like the throne of, of a king on earth. or a, You think of their, their places where just, um, judgments are made. So we think about God seated on his throne, like the person seated on a throne is making judgments about his kingdom. And everyone else, in the pictures in the scripture, you know, the saints, the angels, we're all standing around the throne, but there's only one seated on the throne, right? The lamb. He's seated at the right hand of the throne of the father. Yeah. You know, the, on the throne is the ruling authority at the right hand. It's Jesus. He's seated on the throne. But in the natural realm, there are thrones as well. There are, in the spiritual realm, there are powers and principalities over different parts of the world. I'm going somewhere with this, right? But these thrones, even these thrones, these were all created by Jesus and for Jesus. 
And think about the one that finally came to my mind. It's the throne of your heart. You heard that before, like the throne of your heart? Like who is seated on the throne of your heart? Wow. Um, your heart was created. Your, the, your innermost being, it was created by Jesus. It was created for Jesus. It was created through Jesus. Okay. And when I see people who get burned out, when I see people whose fire dies, when it comes, they, they start to smolder, it's because... They're, they're, there's a wrestling for the control of the throne of their heart. Wow. Um, when your heart is fully submitted to Jesus, I've, I've found in seasons of my life where I'm fully submitted, just fully in, all in for God, my fire's just raging all the time. But when there's a competition for the throne of your heart, there's a, a, it, it's wasting, the, think of the energy it takes to wrestle. Like you wear yourself out. Yeah. Think about Jacob wrestling with God. You know, like wrestling against God. Um, think of if, if, if money is in competition with God for the throne of your heart, you're going to find that you'll, you'll find financial difficulties in that person's life. God says you can't serve both God and mammon, right? Jesus taught God mammon is the spiritual power behind money. You can't serve both. You can only serve one master. Who's on the throne of your heart? Um, are, you, are you fighting for control of your heart? Is um, an addiction fighting for control of your heart? What strong man have you allowed into your life that's fighting with God for the control of your heart? Wow. There's a strong man. If the strong man is in your heart, you've allowed something in that's fighting with God for control of your heart, it will wear you out. But a heart that's fully devoted to God, because your heart was created by Jesus, for Jesus, through Jesus. When you're full and you're, you're pure in your devotion, you're not double-minded man comes to mind. You're not double-minded in all your ways, tossed to and fro like it says in James. Man, I'll tell you, when you're fully submitted to God, the energy just comes natural. Because you're, you're in your wheelhouse, locked into you were created by Jesus, for Jesus, through Jesus, and you're submitted fully to Jesus. Woo! Man, you got energy for days. Yeah. You get that all oh, yeah. That's the source of the all oh, yeah right there. <laughs> when you're locked into that groove where yeah. I'm created by Jesus, for Jesus, through Jesus, nothing else is allowed to touch the throne of my heart. Oh, the strong man, you kick the strong man to the curb. Man, I'm saying drugs, whoa. Unforgiveness, get out. Yeah. Come on, you talk about unforgiveness. I think we talked about it, it came up earlier. Yes. Man, if you're struggling with unforgiveness, and unforgiveness rules and reigns on the throne of your heart, mm. and I don't know how you stay on fire for God. Kick that. It's hard. Kick the strong man out. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure I shared that with you. I wanted to be obedient to God to share that with you just real quick, practical. We love practical things. I'm going to yeah. land it practical yeah. on that. Here at the church, there are two, two classes everybody should take. I know it's crazy. Classes? How can a class help me with this? You need to go through some kind of a formal discipleship class. Everybody should. Uh, I've been through formal discipleship classes like every few years in my life. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, a class doesn't make you a disciple, but it helps you kind of formalize and crystallize the things that you need, the spiritual disciplines like we talked about, things that you need to stay on track with God, scripture memorization. Is your quiet time where it needs to be? You know, there's, it's kind of like a, a check each time. I know a lot of people that, that say, oh, yeah, I went through a discipleship class 40 years ago. I'm good. You know, I, I think we constantly need to be learning, right? Constantly. There's always something you can learn about God. And uh, here's what I've learned, too. Now, I go through discipleship classes, and I bring 25 or 30 people along with me. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, hey, I'm going to have a discipleship group. Does anyone want to come through my discipleship group? And people will come through with me, and I'm studying stuff I know. But I'm learning it almost for the first time sometimes with other people. I'm telling you, it's, it, 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 it's watching people's lights go on in their head. A new believer whose lights come on for the first time about a spiritual principle, boy, I'll keep that fire burning. So being involved with discipleship, like formal, like training, is very important. 
uh, to help us keep the fire burning. And the second thing I would add is freedom. You gotta go through freedom. You wanna kick the strong man to the curb? You gotta go through a freedom course. You got, I've been through, I've been through freedom courses five or six times at least, but two things I went through right after I got saved. One was a discipleship course. Uh, I went through, it was, it was a few weeks, but then there was a follow-up. It was like bait and switch. It's our, our five-week discipleship class. The follow-up was a, a two-year program. And I went all the way through the two years. We memorized 72 scriptures. We learned how to share the gospel and had to practice sharing it yeah. with each other. Yeah. Like form, learned how um, all kinds of great tools and tricks. But I, I went through that when I was young in the faith, and it changed my life forever. Second thing I went through was a freedom course where people were asking me questions and, and we were looking into the scriptures about things like roots of bitterness and generational things that I'd been exposed to. Um, things that, you know, gates that had been opened for the enemy into my family and into me through abuse uh, as a child. Things that I had no control over, but they were done to me. Uh, things that had happened to me that had opened up, had allowed strong men in. When you get in a freedom course, you will, you will have to address some of those demons. Yeah. But I don't know how you lead worship long-term if you're not free from those things. Wow. You, your flames will burn out because you're, you're trying to manufacture energy that should be there automatically. You were created by Jesus, for Jesus, through Jesus. The throne of your heart should be clean and pure, right? Yeah. So think about those two things. If you've, not, uh, if you've not been through them recently, I would think about signing up for them here. Most of you are from Celebration. We have those courses here. Go through those discipleship courses yeah. and, and address some of the things that might be holding you back from God that might be causing your fire yeah. to burn low. How y'all feel? Y'all feel fired up? Come on. How y'all feel? Y'all feel fired up? If you feel fired up, give Jesus a praise in here. Come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hey, man, with three minutes left on the clock, Pastor Sebastian, we nailed it. Come oh, on. Yeah. We love you guys. Thank you for your time. Thanks, and it's-